This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is a fantastic example of all of this. She is the president of Hawaii Venture Capital Association, the co-founder of Mana Up, which is a Hawaii-based initiative designed to build the state's next generation of CEOs in the retail and food product industry, and in 2017, Entrepreneur Magazine named her one of eight women leaders who are disrupting entrepreneurship. She is Melly James, and today we are going beyond business. Hey, Melly, great having you here. Thanks, Rusty. I know you for a long time because you went to Punahou, mm -hmm. played tennis. Uh, when did you start Punahou, though? I started Punahou in 1990 um, in my seventh, seventh grade. Ah. Yep. And then did you have fun playing tennis? And what other activities did you do? I, I played a lot of tennis. My mom was actually the director of tennis at Midpac yeah. in the 80s. So we grew up very big tennis family. Um, I started playing at intermediate in seventh grade as soon as I got in and then ended up playing varsity starting freshman year. Yep. So I think I was there with some overlap with you, Rusty. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then what college did you end up going to? I ended up going to Cornell University to the School of Hotel Administration. Nice. And then I know your sister, Kelly, who also played tennis. What is she doing now? So my sister also played at, at Punahou Varsity. Um, she's now uh, with uh, communications and uh, community relations at Hanahaoli School. Any kids? She's got two kids, wow. uh, a four-year-old and a three-year-old. Wow, great. Very cute. <laughs> <laughs> and then I know your parents, Mark and Rhoda, and how are they doing? They're doing great. Uh, you know, still living in the house that we were we were raised in, and everyone's great. And we spend a lot of time together. So. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Okay, and I want to. There's so many things we need to talk about today, Melly. And in 2007, you started a company called Nervino. Tell me about that. Yeah, so Nervino was uh, kind of my first uh, dive into entrepreneurship. I actually had something called a quarter life crisis. I know you <laughs> thought that was pretty funny. You know, a lot, a lot of things to worry about when you're in your twenties, you know. Um, but really, for me, when I started working in you know kind of the adult world, um, I, a lot of like the jobs I had early on really didn't feel right to me, didn't resonate. And I was thinking, is it just me? Is this like how being adult is? Like you're just not supposed to really like what you're doing. Um, and so I kind of came to the realization that, that that's not, doesn't have to be your norm. Okay. So I, I, I quit the job that I was at and took about six months off um, working with a life coach. And I had some savings and I was doing some work on the side, but um, was really able to work with this life coach to think about, you know, what was I good at? What was I not good at? What did I, you know, what did I like doing? What did I not like doing? And I created these buckets of things that were things I could be potentially interested in. Because I think a lot of people, when they're looking at what they want to do and they're like, oh, I'm open to anything, that's really overwhelming when you're just <laughs> open to like anything. Um, and so when I, when I met my co-founder, when he had represented a bunch of things that had fallen into these buckets of things I was interested in was you know, working for myself, maybe in like technology. I loved wine. All of these different things ended up kind of making sense. Yep. And so we launched in 2007. This was actually before the iPhone like launched, okay. which, which I think it did in June or November of 07. But basically before then, we just had these really clunky phones that had web browsers. <laughs> you know, remember those like yeah. big phones? Oh, you know, yeah. It was like horrible user experience. Um, and there were no apps because, again, there was no app store. There was no iPhone yet. Yep. And so we created the first mobile website for wine. And it was solving a very big problem, for me at least, and, and, and seemingly a lot of other people where we're always trying to find good wine. And we always base it on how cute the label is and what the price point is. And so now that we had all this information at our fingertips, why shouldn't we have it at the grocery store when we're looking at the big shelf? Why shouldn't we have it at the restaurant? And so we created this first mobile website. And then when the iPhone launched, and the App Store launch, it created a marketplace for us to sell this information. So kind of through all of that and already having a lot of data already, we became um, the number one wine app very quickly on the iTunes Store, a top 10 uh, paid app, uh, lifestyles app, and top 100 overall paid app on the entire store. 
That's that's amazing. I remember when it came out and and it got number one as an app. Now, what ended up happening to Nervino? Yeah, and that's that's a great question. You know, that was a my first company was on a crazy high. Um, and then we, I had a big falling out with my business partner, and that taught me a lot of lessons. You know, really kind of falling very far um, from a company that was doing really well, and you know, kind of realizing around getting a better relationship with my gut. Um, and there were a lot of red flags that I chose not to look at, and there were a lot of feelings I was having that I was just like, no, 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 it'll all work out. Um, and learning some of those hard lessons around trust around finding a, a, a founder or co-founder or a business partner that you, you do believe and you trust and um, that is, you know, you've got the right paperwork too. Yeah. So th those are some key lessons I learned. And I, um, it, was, it was tough, it was my first company was, I'd say my most successful company um, w within the startup world. Um, of course, Mana Up is a different type of company, um, but just really learning those hard lessons around betrayal and, and having a co-founder that that it didn't work out with. Yeah, trust is so huge. I mean, it's it's so necessary to have. Um, but then you you got involved in Blue Startups and UH's Accelerate. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yeah. So when I when I moved back to Honolulu, I was really looking at what I could do here. I started thinking about you know I was living in San Francisco for about eleven years and building this you know great network. And I was like, you know, do I really want to be here forever? Um, there, it's such a transient city. And I was like, you know, I think I do really want to be back in Hawaii long term. So why should I be continuing to cultivate this network here when I should be cultivating a network in Hawaii? And so I came home a lot and started seeing these start early inklings of startup um, innovation and some of the things in Silicon Valley that I had come to love, you know, having my company there, which was like Startup Weekend, the first Startup Weekend happened. Box Jelly opened, you know, Ray Chung had opened that first co-working space oh, in yeah. Kaka'ako. Yeah. And I started thinking, okay, well, maybe there's something here. And so when I moved back, um, I kind of quickly got scooped up by Blue Startups. I was part of their initial team um, as their program manager, running um, really the program uh, with the entrepreneurs that were getting accepted. And that was an incredible experience, you know, working with Shanoa and Maya and Hank um, and getting on the, more on the investor side of things as well as the mentorship side as opposed to just actually doing it, which is what my experience had been for five years right before I left, was being an entrepreneur and launching companies. I actually launched a couple other ones after Nirvino. Um, and that was neat to kind of be on the other side of the table, and that was an incredible experience. Um, the Accelerate UH program was incredible, working with the University of Hawaii and looking at intellectual property and other talents that were coming out of UH, um, which was kind of a reflection of, of regional strengths because the university and their strong departments are reflections of regional strengths in Hawaii. Well, I, it's definitely a win-win situation for them and you, I think, you know, putting these brilliant minds together. Um, and then you're also currently the uh, president of the Hawaii Venture Capitalist Association. What does that organization do? So we are a 30-year-old organization. We started in 1988. And what we are is really around networking and connecting the business community with entrepreneurs, with investors, government, um, bringing to light conversations that, and panels that should be, we should be having around, you know, what's the legislative agenda that affects innovation and small business and entrepreneurship on the docket, you know, this year? Or, you know, kind of looking at what's the state of, of investment in Hawaii, like where are we at? You know, where, where is the money? Um, who are the new entities? And kind of keeping those things front of kind of on the front. Um, so we host a, a, a panel every other month throughout the year with different innovation ideas around fashion, food, different things like that. Um, and then we also host an annual Hawaii Venture Capital Association Deal and Entrepreneur of the Year Gala, which features the highlights of the successes of the last year. So it's, an, it's a really nice way to create these succinct stories around what has been happening over the last year and some great successes and momentum here in Hawaii. Well, you, you do a, a whole lot of stuff, Melly. <laughs> now let's talk about Mana Up. I mean, it's such an amazing company. You're a co-founder. How did that come about? That's a great question. It's, it's really interesting because I think some of the, like, you know, I'm so passionate about, about what we're doing and I think it really came from a gap that we saw. Um, you know, a lot of the accelerators here, they're fe featuring, are focusing on regional strengths, they're focusing on high growth, venture backable companies, gaming, you know, being really sector agnostic, whether it's service based, product based, tech based, whatever, all those different things. We really didn't see anything that was focused on 
consumer packaged goods or products. Um, and looking at you know, what is another regional strength, a competitive advantage we can, we can leverage, because it is so hard to do business here. And you know, Brittany and I, Brittany Hyde, my co-founder, and I really came to the conclusion that the brand of Hawaii is an incredible strength we have um, that's really best seen in more product-based companies. You, know, you can start a tech company called Mahalo or something, that doesn't really <laughs> matter. Um, but we're seeing, especially with Omiyagi, with tourism being on the rise, we see a lot of mainland companies that are leveraging our brand of Hawaii that have nothing to do with Hawaii. Hawaii doesn't profit from any of it, yet they know Hawaii sells, and so they're leveraging it. So why can't we connect those dots here, start looking at these mom and pop companies that are making some beautiful quality things and help them kind of level up and really start to create global brands right from here, creating jobs and sustainable livelihood. Well, it's definitely amazing what you and Brittany are doing uh, to help so many of these companies. Now, are, is there like an application process for these companies to get selected? Yes. So uh, it's an online application. It's actually open all year, so people can apply anytime. But we do our kind of open enrollment or more application with the interviews twice a year. Okay. So we last our first cohort, we had about 85 applicants. Jeez. We interviewed about 25 to 30 of them and then selected 10. And that's essentially the process every time. We're about to announce our third cohort um, in about two weeks. So we have 21 companies already in our portfolio and we'll be announcing another 10 to making that 31 in our portfolio. Well, I bet they're crossing their fingers and crossing their toes hoping to get selected from you. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> so. So what is that 12 week accelerator program that you guys have at Mana Up? So, you know, when we looked at the companies, we have very specific criteria they have to meet. One, they have to be headquartered in Hawaii. We want to be focusing on companies that are headquartered here because that's where you truly get, you know, really uncapped wealth potential and really uncapped opportunities when someone has an opportunity to really grow with a company because it's headquartered here, yeah. as opposed to being, you know, the satellite manager for a mainland company and you're the, the one person over here representing Hawaii. Um, two, they have to be at $100,000 minimum annual revenue. And so these companies are still startups. They certainly haven't, for all intent and purpose, made it yet. Yep. But they figured out a few things. People are buying their stuff. Um, and we wanted them to be kind of at that level so they're really ready to scale. Most of our companies, to be honest, are more like at half a million. But um, we make the 100,000 the, the minimum. Wow. Um, the third thing is they have to want to scale. They have to want to grow to global markets. A lot of companies here, they've got beautiful stuff. It, more mom and pop, and they and it's a lifestyle company, and they want to stay that way. That's awesome. We're here to totally support you, but you may not be the best fit for the program. Um, and also, you know, it's good for e-commerce and other things like that. So you're in the consumer packaged goods space, meaning you're a health or beauty product, a retail product, or a value add food product with a minimum of six months shelf life. So basically with the 12-week program, they're all revenue generating, so they're all running their businesses. Yeah. So this is certainly not an academic exercise where we're like, okay, you have to be in our office all day, every day. They're like, I'm trying to run my business. So um, we, we really condense it to one time a week. On a Tuesday, we started about 1.30, and then we ended about 7. Okay. And what we do there is there's a lot of um, resources that come in. So we've got great partnerships with resources that have existed well before Mana Up. But we have them come in and really talk with the entrepreneurs about, in layman's terms, what this resource can actually do for you. Yeah. Um, and then we have workshops. We have, normally have two every session. So it's either skills-based training or leadership training. So um, it, for skills, it could be Shopify is one of our um, partners. So they come in from Canada. And Shopify, as most of us know, are, is the platform that most e-commerce uh, and websites are, are run through. So they kind of teach, you know, best practices, what apps you should use to layer on top of your Shopify website, how to increase sales, SEO, stuff like that. And then we have leadership training, like how do you create that culture for your company? A lot of these founders, they're first time founders. Um, they created these companies maybe after having their first child and didn't, you know, didn't feel like it made sense to go back to work, but had this idea to start a company and create these products. And so when you think about that and you think about all of us and the training that we had before starting our own companies, it was all so different, right? So the training I had was, I was in sales like it, for, um, for W Hotels. Yeah. I was a sales manager. You know, I was in research and marketing for the <laughs> San Jose Convention and Visitors Bureau. I had all these different skill sets, but I wasn't trained to be a founder. And so when you think about that, how can we leverage some of the great minds here that have been able to create successful business, have been able to create great companies here, and have them come in kind of op open kimono style, you know, heavy Q&A, and being sitting down in a room with 
10 young or you know early CEOs of, of flourishing companies sitting down with a great CEO that's been here having great success for a long time like you know Dennis Cherney she's come in he was CEO of Hawaiian Host oh yeah we had Mark Tyra come in who's CEO of King's Hawaiian Sweetbread um, you know we had uh, John Morgan come in from Kualoa Ranch so all of these great um, minds kind of come in and I think that really starts to address I think the biggest challenge that I see with a lot of our entrepreneurs is that mindset and having that mindset shift of knowing that you can create something big here um, and to think bigger. Yeah, you guys are, you and Brittany are brilliant together and you guys are doing something that's actually so exciting to really help these businesses. Melly, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond business. Thank you. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Melly James. We will be back in 60 seconds. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm gonna keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're gonna talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're gonna definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Melly James, the co-founder of Mana Up, which is helping to build the state's next generation of CEOs in retail and food product industry. And today, we are going beyond business. Melly, in 2016, Entrepreneur Magazine named you one of top five women to watch. And in 2017, that same magazine named you one of eight women leaders who are disrupting entrepreneurship. How does it feel to be highlighted in that way in this awesome magazine? I was incredibly honored. You know, it's so funny when we're out here in Hawaii in the middle of the Pacific, we always feel like, you know, people don't see what we're doing. <laughs> um, but it was, it was an incredible honor. And I actually got to go up to New York and meet the other women um, in, in, you know, that were featured. We had a big photo shoot. Um, and then actually one of the women was hosting a, a women's conference a few months later in Houston and had invited all of us to you know be at different uh, speaking engagements during that conference so that was a lot of fun really getting to know them um, I will say the woman who was one of the five and she was actually on the cover uh, was the uh, uh, she was the woman that uh, created the female Viagra oh, so really? you got to give her hats off to of that <laughs> no I, I I love that Melly and I you know you're someone that definitely goes beyond the lines and I want to ask you about my book. You know, how are you? How did you like the book? I know you read it. Yes, I really enjoyed the book, and it was interesting. For, I guess for selfish reasons, I, I because I was there for so many of the years on the team. Yeah. Um, granted, not on the men's team, um, but I could kind of tell some of the people you were referencing. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was. Um, I thought it was really neat to to think about. I have always kind of seen my tennis experience and that competitive uh, competitiveness or being able like that teamwork and different things like that that have really helped to help me be a better leader and also work to work together more but i was um i was really kind of inspired by your book by just by just kind of remi reminding myself of that time and and what that meant for me so i really enjoyed it well i think all of our viewers you know they're learning about how brilliant you are as a leader and you know how how you're helping so many people. You definitely go beyond the lines. I want to know, uh, Melly, what, how do you define success? I mean, success can be interpreted in so many ways, and I want to know what your take on success is. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I think, um, 
I always, I always say this quote, um, which is interesting because I saw it when I was back at Cornell. I'm an entrepreneur in residence for the school, so I'm there every six months. Yeah. And I was walking by and I saw this quote that said, success is never final. And it was um, a quote by, from J.W. Marriott, of course, the hotel person <laughs> in the hotel school. Um, and I was, I was actually kind of thought about that for quite some time as to like what that quote meant to me. And I think it's as we continue to gain certain successes, we're never, we don't ever think like, okay, I'm successful now. I'm just going to like rest on my laurels and just kind of <laughs> sit here because that's not really the point. As we gain certain successes, as we continue doing things, um, there's always kind of that next thing. And I think that a lot of people, when they think about success, think it needs to be this, this destination. Um, but really it's about that process. And if you can be enjoying that process as you have goals and you hit them and you've got other goals and you hit them, that it is about that process, which is why it's never final. And if you can em embrace that more, you're going to find a lot more success and really enjoy that whole journey because you never really know when you know, life can end yeah. or yeah. You know, things shift. But I know that there are a lot of highs and lows that I've had in my career. Um, and, I, and I really feel that through all of that, I've been able to, to figure out that um, I trust myself more in that I know I can figure anything out. And that's actually the kind of the fun part about it when the world becomes your oyster and an opportunity to problem solve sure. is when I actually trust that I may not know how to do that right now, but I can figure it out. And that's actually what makes it quite fun for me. So yeah. I guess if that kind of answers your question, how I view success, it's that success are just kind of these different iterations of process. And so for me, I never look at like, oh, I've gotten, I've done all these things. I just think, yeah, this has been so much fun. Um, and granted, sometimes it's not so fun <laughs> when it doesn't go well, but, but I'm enjoying that process. So I guess, I guess that's how I view success. Yeah, no, that's great. And, you know, every successful person, they deal with challenges and adversities. What, what do you think was a major challenge for you in your young, successful life so far? I would say, well, one, having the big falling out with my first co-founder, um, that, that was a real blow for me because I think I'm, I'm very trusting and I think kind of I'm in this for the best reasons and I think everyone else should be. But it's kind of that trust but, ver trust but verify, yeah. which is the uh, lesson that I've had to learn. Um, you know, I think a another kind of, like, that's a good question. I'm trying to remember what I like originally thought about this one. <laughs> um, I'd say, you know, really building kind of mana up yeah. came from going through a, like another process for me about like what was really important for me um, and why I would moved back to Hawaii in the first place. Um, and, and for a lot of it is selfish reasons for, for building, helping to build this innovation ecosystem. I want to see more smart people being able to move back or to be here um, and doing really cool stuff. And so I think when I was growing up and graduating from high school and graduating from college, there was this kind of unspoken or maybe spoken thing around, you know, if you were really motivated, you really wanted to do things you had to move away. You, you couldn't do it here. Unless you were going to be a banker, lawyer, doctor, or you had some family business you were taking over where you had like this pathway to success, that true opportunity wasn't going to be here. And that really frustrated me for a long time because I don't even think I really had the choice if I wanted to stay or I didn't. I felt like I just couldn't. And I did leave for a long time. I was gone for 11 years. Um, but I think kind of at a, a certain point, you know, as I was trying to figure out what Mana Up could be and I had, you know, met Brittany and we were loosely talking, I really had to dig deep. Um, I actually went to Nepal for a month Jeez. and trekked about 120 miles up oh. through the Himalayas oh. um, up in an area called Mustang, which is like northern middle, right below, um, right in the northern middle part. Um, and it was, it was an incredible journey for me and it kind of actually uh, relates to your book a little bit around... I think when I was trekking, it wasn't about what I was thinking about because you were just doing it. Yep. And you're, we were trekking like 10 to 12 miles a day, sometimes at 15,000 feet. But it was through that process of starting like, to like trust my body and to just, just to feel like strong and just kind of that mo those moments of just kind of doing and like getting back to basics around just kind of getting up the mountain kind of helped me to, to start to, to just feel more connected to me, um, which, which I thought was, 
which was really important for me at the time um, as we were trying to figure out how we were going to do this thing. <laughs> yeah. What an experience that must have been. Jeez. So, Melly, you know, you're a strong, successful leader. What do you think is one thing you need to improve on for yourself? You know, that's, a, that's another good question. Um, one thing I know I need to do, and one thing actually I've figured out is, you know, how to create or how to find a co-founder with complementary skill sets. And Brittany, who is the co-founder of Mana Up, and I are just totally perfect partners. Like all the things that I hate doing, she loves doing and she's really good at. And all the things she hates doing, I really love doing and I'm really good at. <laughs> so it's, it's been really neat to see that kind of a partnership where we're not competing with each other. We just really make, it help, make each other better. But I'd say one thing I do need to work on is, is kind of getting that kind of perspective, walking away from myself and getting out of the minutia of like the everyday just because we're executing on so many things to kind of get off the dance floor and get onto the, like the balcony yeah. and really look down at myself and, and think about, okay, what's next? Like, what do I really want to do? What am I building towards that isn't necessarily within a year or two, but it's kind of bigger than that. Um, and so that's something I know I need to work on. And so I've actually um, just started uh, working again, uh, you know, with like a, you know, engaging with like a career coach or a life coach, which I haven't done in over 10 years. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited to have that opportunity to go through that process of like, how do I start to have those ways of disconnecting and seeing it from this level um, so that I can really make some bigger strides and, and actually think bigger, even though we work with entrepreneurs to help them think bigger. I need to think bigger too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you're successful. Now, Melly, you've worked with a lot of CEOs. What do you think, what do you think makes these good CEOs great? What do they do that makes them great? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I would say um, the ones that I've met or that I've worked with that have made them great yeah. are the ones that are really taking an interest in, in not only um, in their culture of the culture of the company they're trying to create. And I think um, as they as they bring on more employees, like we're seeing them kind of early sometimes, but as they're trying to figure out who to bring on, and also not looking at the like direct uh, check marks of skill sets they need, but really looking at who the person is and how they're going to impact the company, um, and being able to speak to that, I think is really important. Um, because it really starts with that first hire. Yeah. And that's where it's, it's interesting because most of our companies, they, they have at least maybe one employee. And having them and having us, we really started actually increasing more of our leadership training in the cohorts because we were seeing that it's a big need um, as they're looking for like, okay, what kind of leader do I want to be? You know, what kind of, um, what kind of culture do I want to create in the company? How, are, how am I able to exude that um, in, in many different ways? And I think that's, that's the difference I see is when people have real intention um, around the, the environment that they're creating within their company. Melly, I, I really enjoy you know, all of your insights about leadership and business. And you're completely right about creating a culture of excellence and discipline details. That's, that's what I'm all about and that's what the book is about. And that's definitely what you're doing. I wanna really Thank you for being on Beyond the Lines today. Thank you, Rusty. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Just Melly. like you said it would be. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. And a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit my website, RustyKamori.com. And my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that this show inspires you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.